Welcome to the Why Not 3 podcast, where you get the behind the scenes of achieving a work-life balance with peak performance. Hey there, and welcome to a new podcast. Uh, today we're going to be talking about work-life balance for students in the year. And the reason is quite simple. I have quite a lot of uh, friends that are now going into exam period. January, December is usually in Europe when everybody's in exams. And actually, I think across the world. So I have gone through law school and I can share some of the stuff that I did when I was tutoring law students. And especially now combining it with work-life balance and everything, all my perception on work-life balance, I think this can be quite interesting. We did, uh, I think on episode four, we had Jasmine Wilness, uh, the founder of University of Life, who discussed how she did that because she is quite young and so inspiring. Uh, she stood together with me at TEDx Rotterdam. So I definitely recommend that episode as well because there we discuss how to do a work-life balance during exams so that you can still achieve as much as you can, as much time as you can uh, in productivity state. So today's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be more centered around students. Um, and yeah, let's just fly right into it. The first thing that I recommend, and this is uh, in my days that I was tutoring law students, it was the most important thing. Uh, it starts summarizing and start summarizing way before that. Now, of course, I can only share my subjective uh, opinion because I studied law, so we had huge books. Um, if we had small books, there were many people that didn't summarize that just went through the books and then uh, at the end did the exam. However, I experimented a lot and I noticed that uh, all, on me, but also on the students that I was tutoring, and I, I discovered a pattern that the people that started summarizing a lot and taking notes, and not only notes in the classes, but literally summarizing their entire textbooks and then learning from that summary, they were scoring way higher points. Um, I'll give you an example. For me, when I was not summarizing in the beginning, I was struggling so much to get through these huge books. And the moment I start summarizing and leading up to the exams, I already had my summary and I just had to learn from the summary. Um, my my grades shot up with almost, um, what was it, 40%. And that was, that was enormous for me. I'd never had grades like that starting off a university. So it was quite a transition. Even though I skipped my last year, um, and, and with skip, what I mean with that is I, I skipped, I did two years in one year because uh, I wanted to start university and being more independent uh, sooner. Uh, even though I did that, it was still quite a transition to go into university. So summarizing is really the number one thing that uh, I would be doing if I was still a student. And it's the number one thing I advise everybody to do as a student. Um, of course, if you are really quite close to the deadline of your exam, um, it can still help. But um, yeah, I don't know, just make sure that for the next exam period, you have a clear structure, a clear plan so that when you go into your exam period, all your summaries are done already. Now, let's go into tip number two, which is uh, a bit more biohacker-esque, uh, which is track your sleep data and pro productivity data to know your optimal times. What do I mean with that? After a while, if you're a student, um, you will have had uh, several exam periods. And it's very important to track those uh, periods very, very closely because some very interesting things will pop up uh, considering your sleep. For instance, if you sleep a certain amount of hours, you'll know that you'll be productive that day uh, studying. So it's very important to track that. For some, it's eight hours. For some, it's six hours. Um, for some, they sleep five hours and seem to be very alert. So during exam periods, these are, of course, exceptions. That's not how you should uh, live your entire life. But it, it will give you an insight on how productive you actually are on how many hours. So tracking your sleep data, and you can do that with a simple sleep app um, on the App Store. And, and the second thing is tracking your productivity data. So throughout the day, you will have times where you're just out of nowhere procrastinating and you can't do anything about it. And then on other times, you're suddenly super productive. Um, this is normal and it's very important during your exam periods 
that you actually know uh, what those optimal times are now the reason you are super productive or not productive depends on various things it could be your environment it could be um, your diet it could be if you're mostly carb based and you're not mostly fat based and it's very uh, very plausible for instance that your blood sugar level um, is spiking up and down because of the insulin uh, releases to stabilize uh, your body uh, in in very very simple words what that means is if you're if you're eating really bad stuff during exam periods or you're drinking red bull and you're doing all of that stuff then your body is trying to create homeostasis so it wants to be stable again it wants to have a balance um, and so it will it will have to work to maintain that balance especially if you trigger it with a lot of stress uh, it will start releasing certain stuff to create a balance in your body uh, so it's very important that you know um, how much you need to sleep to have a balance so that you're actually productive that entire day. And then when you're productive that entire day, uh, track which hours are the best. Because it doesn't matter how big your books are. If you are super focused for two to three hours and then take a break of five hours and then again super focused for two to three hours and then again a break, uh, it's better than if you would be pushing yourself the entire time um, for 12 hours and then amounting into, I don't know, only doing 50 pages. Whereas if you would, would have done focused sessions of, uh, six hours, um, then yeah, you could have gotten a lot more done. And actually the way I used to do that is I got myself a G shock and, and I'm quite, I'm quite the watch guy. If people know me, so I have all these fancy watches lying around, but, um, the G-Shock was the most used one when I was a student just because uh, it had a timer, uh, a stopwatch. And I would literally track every time I would study. And I got this uh, little trick from a mentor of mine. Um, and when you, so when you start studying, you click on the, on the stopwatch. And then when you stop studying and you take up your phone, you stop the stopwatch. And I started realizing with this trick that I was effectively studying only two and a half hours in days that I was spending 10 hours in the library. And I started amping it up up to five and a half hours. And I think my maximum was seven and a half hours. And that was the period where I was discovering neurotropics and those really screwed me up. Um, and I'm not even talking about smart drugs. I'm literally talking about uh, vitamin stacks um, that sometimes shouldn't be combined and how they reacted on me because they put you kind of an overdrive which your body is not used to and especially combined with the stress of exams uh, it used to amount into um, a, a week after the exams that I was just recovering from stress so definitely uh, not advisable to get neurotropics get a stopwatch uh, track your sleep data and productivity data to know your optimal times and the last thing is uh, try to record your classes uh, check of course with intellectual property but try to record your classes and listen when meditating um, or listen when you're in bed uh, because some of us are auditory people we retain more when there is um, audio or visual so make sure that you know which kind of learner you are. There are four types um, based on the savvy model, somatic, auditory, uh, visual and intellectual. So know what kind of learner you are and adjust your style according to that instead of listening to what everyone else is doing, um, because that's the whole point of biohacking and having a work life balance. It's having your own work life balance and experimenting with as much as possible. So those are kind of my three tips uh, for students uh, in the year um, and how they can start uh, going into their exams. First, start summarizing so that when you go into your exams, everything is done already. Track your sleep data and productivity data to know, to know your optimal times. And then lastly, try to record your classes and listen when meditating or when you're in your bed because if you are an auditory person uh, that will be the thing that will change your grades thank you for tuning in and i'll see you on the next episode